Hi, if you already know my channel, you might have seen my 3D printed toy cap revolver. It comes entirely out of the printer. No screws, no springs, no glue. It uses the energy of toy caps to actually shoot, but of course, it's made of plastic and only has the power of weaker airsoft guns. For a while now, I've wanted to make the design feel a bit more high-end, especially with a real wood grip. That's where Snapmaker's offer came just at the right time. They asked if I wanted to showcase their latest printer, the Snapmaker Artisan Premium. It's a combo machine that not only prints but also mills and lasers. Perfect for my project. So many thanks to Snapmaker for providing me with this great machine and supporting this video. Now I want to take you along for the revolver's production. First I got a piece of walnut wood and did some initial milling tests. But before that I had a look around the community and saw among others from 3D Printing Nerd shout out at this point just how much dust is created when milling without any suction. Honestly I didn't feel like dealing with that. So I first built my own dust extractor with flexible TPU flaps that catch the dust quite well. Then it could begin. Probe height, turn on the extractor, start the milling. The first results were promising, but fibers formed on the surface. I tried different bits, diamond cut, single and double flute and experimented with spindle speeds and feed rates, but the issue couldn't be solved completely, so some post-production was needed. If you have any better tips, please drop them in the comments. Once I had the milling parameters under control, I moved on to the actual part. I drilled four holes to securely fasten the workpiece on the bed with countersinks for the screw heads. Then I first milled the future button surface flat. In the second pass I was a bit too optimistic and removed too much material at once while also milling among the grain. That created long wood fibers, not ideal. The extractor got clogged up a bit, but here you can see it was still very effective against the fine dust and spared me a bigger mess. After cleaning the surface looked nice and clean and I could begin the actual milling. First with a rough bit, then step by step finer down to 1mm bits for fine details.
finally came the outer contour. Then I could release the raw part and cut through the holding tabs and remove the finished part. Of course it wasn't done yet. The wood fibers had to be removed and the surface sanded. I used an electric sander to round the edges and smooth the milling marks. The finishing process was especially satisfying. After rubbing in bee wax I polished the surface which really brought out the beautiful walnut grain. But that was only half of it. The revolver consists of two body shells. For the second half I'll just show you the individual milling jobs briefly, so you get an idea of how much work goes into a CNC part like this. For the next step, I swap the milling head for the print head and the milling bed for the heated print bed. With the snap maker that's surprisingly easy. One lever out in done. My very first print on this machine was the spring that tensions the hammer and I was immediately impressed by the print quality. There was a bit of stringing but that's just a matter of settings and was easily removed with a lighter. For a nice contrast to the dark walnut wood I went with a light silver silk peel A filament. One particularly exciting feature, the printer has two nozzles one which can be lifted mechanically. That allows you to print with water soluble or breakaway support material, for example. In this scene it's hard to see because the colors are very similar. First I remove the rough peel A support structures, then comes a thin layer of breakaway material, which unfortunately has almost the same color as the peel A. So I've highlighted it in green here. Once you remove the support, you get really clean surfaces underneath. Back to the milled part. Since I could only mill the workpiece from the top, I had to add a few details by hand. A small chamfer here and a side hole there. I couldn't mill this so I printed a template and drilled the hole afterward. A small pin was glued in there. On the 3D printed version I could have just clipped it in, but that wasn't possible here. Now I could assemble all the parts. I was very curious if everything would fit, but it worked well. At this point I was able to do a first function test which was very promising. The trigger had to be manually reset at first 
because the spring wasn't tensioned yet. I was a little nervous since under tension, of course, there's a lot of stress in the wood. But as you see here, everything held up. The mechanism works and the first test shot was successful. Since the snapmaker can also laser, I took the chance to make a few targets. The machine has two diet lasers either separately for fine engraving or combined for more power when cutting. I tested both, first engraving at higher speed, then cutting at higher power. As you can see there is a lot of smoke, good extraction and outside ventilation is important here. For shooting are printed small bullets that fit into this cylinder. If you look closely you can see a small orange ball bouncing off to the right. I also tried some pyro cotton to get a small pyro effect when shooting. Okay, the barrel still had to be glued in. One more try. Okay, you see a tiny flash here somewhere. But it didn't fully ignite. But with pyro cord, I was able to create a small fireball. That's it for now, I hope you enjoyed my video, I definitely had a lot of fun with this project, huge thanks to Snapmaker for the sponsorship, I really enjoyed working with the machine and can wholeheartedly recommend it. I've worked with many 3D printers before, but this one is definitely among the best. And if you want to buy this or another device from Snapmaker, you'll find the 5% discount code EXPLODER5 and the link to Snapmaker in the description. And if you want to see what's next. In the next video I'll probably show you my 3D printed potato cannon with explosive shots. So don't forget to subscribe.